Uh, welcome to Video Marketing for Dollars. So I'll start out with my uh, my first, uh, kind of my first epiphany in, in with the YouTube marketing. And I guess it came about here, here you're looking at the screen of the uh, sidewalk. Standing out front uh, one Saturday afternoon and Luis and I, my next door neighbor and I, are looking at my sidewalk and there's water running over it. And you know what happens. Uh, you know, I just bought this house several years prior, or just, just then. And several years prior, I, I had a house where the water was running across the sidewalk for, for a number of years. And it ended up being kind of mossy and starting to sink. So here I'm looking at this new construction sidewalk and I started to see the water running across it. And I was, you know, I was, I was kind of concerned. So, you know, Louise says, hey, you need a French drain. And, I, you know, I'm, I'm like, yeah, 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 I need a French drain. <laughs> That's not tr truly knowing what uh, what a French drain is, other than you know, I've seen them pop up on uh, home inspections before. But here you're looking at the, the effects of what can happen when constant water runs under or over a sidewalk, a piece of it can sink. So, you know, don't, knowing me, I, I immediately need to do a little uh, research to figure out what uh, what you know what I need to know about French drains. So I started. I went to Google, did a search, here's French Train, and I've got all these articles. Start reading articles. I'm 45 minutes, maybe an hour into this, reading some articles on French Trains. And this is a, you know, six years ago. So this is about the time video starts to pop up in the Google search engine results. And so I get down a little bit further, and you can see here on the screen, there's a couple of videos in the search engine results from Google, uh, the French Train video. Well, lo and behold, I clicked that first video, watch it, and in, in two minutes, I learned all I needed to know about video. And here I'd spent 45 minutes reading and reading and reading up on it, and in two minutes, heck, a picture's worth a thousand words. If you're looking at video, and video is 30 frames per second, you can tell that you know just a lot more comes across. So we've, we're finding video to be our resource in learning, in entertainment, um, it's, and it, we've got a generation growing up staring at video uh, way over over reading or uh, or doing research inside books. So that that epiphany had me really looking at my real estate business and thought, you know, how is this going to affect the future? Uh, and you know, it became very obvious in the industry, in well, not just our industry, but throughout the country, that that YouTube was uh, was becoming popular because Google purchased it for one. I mean, we saw the the growth of video in YouTube just incredibly over a short period of time. When they opened up uh, Google and those PayPal boys opened up Google after leaving uh, PayPal and they sold it a, less than a year later for one point six five billion dollars, we knew we had to start taking uh, video seriously. And then soon after Google purchasing uh, YouTube, you know, they hit one billion views a day, which is just astronomical, especially when you look at the population of the United States being about 300 million. One billion views a day is pretty incredible. And then soon they hit two billion videos views a day. And then, uh, uh, you know, more recently, they've they rated it at, they stopped counting how many people view it, uh, and they start counting how many hours are uploaded, and about 48 hours worth of video is chronicled into YouTube uh, each and every minute. 48 hours worth of video uploaded every minute. That's just out of this world. Um, now here's a valuable website called Alexa. Alexa, great website, great resource that you want to know about. It can be used for tools for you to, to determine what maybe you could do better on your website uh, as far as meta tags, content, what people are interested, what links they're clicking on, and how many uh, other websites are linking to you. Well, Alexa is also kind of the the standard for which we rate websites or how we know what's number one, two, three in different segment, segments or marketing segments. And here you see uh, just globally the top websites of the world, uh, Google, Facebook, and YouTube. Uh, just amazing. And then if you look a little deeper enough, I click on YouTube and Alexa, uh, you get to a, a stat here that's, that's what we call the reach. The reach uh, for a global type website, this one shows uh, I guess this is America, but in America, of the hundred percent of the people that go on the internet, thirty-three percent here you see 
uh, yesterday, seven day, one month, three months. So about average, 33% of the people that get on the internet go to YouTube. Now, that's pretty outstanding. Um, if you're not in YouTube, you are not where people are going and spending time. Speaking of spending time, if I go one page deeper into uh, Alexa here, you can see what we call time on site, or what the techies like to call hang time. Uh, the time on site in, in YouTube is also astronomical. They have a 20 or 19 minute hang time on an average. So what that means, of the 100% of the people that get on the internet in the United States, 33% of them go to YouTube, and they hang out there about 20 minutes. Now, if you could say your website had a three-minute or four-minute hang time as a real estate website, that would be pretty phenomenal. Um, now, how this affects you is when, you're, when your real estate website is maintained and people go to it and they stay there, if they hang there, if their time on site goes up or the time on site on one page goes up, um, that's going to really tell Google that this is a valid website, a place where people like to go and research. So how could you increase your, your time on site? But, well, it's having compelling content that people want to see and view. Um, so what's more compelling this day and age is uh, as a video. So we could take our YouTube videos and actually display them or what we call embed those videos right in our website and increase our time on site, therefore increasing uh, YouTube, uh, Google's uh, uh, value or you know, how Google sees us and making, uh, making our website more prevalent in the search engine result. So this is pretty amazing to me. Uh, about two years ago, I created a course of uh, video internet marketing and we've been kind of just continuing to update and update that course as time passes, but I took this screenshot that you see on the screen two years ago. Now, it's a YouTube search for Dallas, Texas real estate. The reason I picked that search term or criteria, uh, just it's just a really common search, is the city name plus the two-digit state plus the words real estate. That seems to be searched more than anything else. But you can see that it produced a result, and the result is about 9,580 results, meaning, uh, Meta tags, content, video, how that video was labeled uh, and how, how it was described, about 9,580 videos had the terms that matched Dallas, Texas real estate. Now that's, that's pretty, that's something. Um, you know, I think we have about 18,000 agents in the Metroplex, Dallas. So that means about half of us had one video or, you know, a few of us had multiple videos. But either way, it's only about 9,580, and that's just not uh, not very much. But if I did that search today for Dallas, Texas real estate, it produces 236,000 results. Folks, your competition is getting in the marketplace using video, and here is proof. Two years ago, 9,500 videos representing Dallas, Texas real estate. Today, 236,000 real estate agents, or 236,000 real estate, tech, Dallas, Texas real estate related videos up on YouTube. If you don't get in today, I don't think it's going to be any, any easier for you tomorrow when we're all five years down the road and have been doing it for five years. You think you fear video today? What about when we're really comfortable because we've been doing it for five years? Now is the time. You've got to start implementing video into your real estate business and marketing efforts. Here you see on a screen, kind of like today's version of marketing in real estate. Um, above the, the middle line, the midline, above the midline, you see... You know, the number one place we re acquire business is uh, the sphere of influence, people that we know and love, people that know and love us. And we hang out in these new places called social networks today. That's Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter is what you see represented across the top. So if we're hanging out in Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, the days of the Chamber of Commerce meetings are, are long gone. We have to be social in those places, but then when we're 
when that buyer or seller friend relative or neighbor becomes a buyer or seller, they're going to drop into our really business-based listening posts. So if you're if we're chatting and being social, hanging out in Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter, when you're ready to buy or sell, that guy's going to drop down into what's representing our website as a Internet Explorer icon there. The middle orange icon is a B for blogger, and the right-hand icon, of course, is YouTube, as you can see. So people hang out above, they drop temporarily into our business listening posts, and, and here is where we have an opportunity to show them our stuff, what we're all about in real estate. And you can get away with not having a website, a blog, or a YouTube, but this business is way too hard to, to try to... Uh, they could exercise that luxury. It's just not going to happen. Um, so w today we're focusing on YouTube. Uh, the other icons represent other courses that we, we hold at Metroplex across the Mondays, uh, across the Metroplex, and love to see you there. But with YouTube in mind, so why don't we have any video today? Well, gosh, I, you know, do I need to give you one more thing you have to do? Uh, I, know, I understand we're overwhelmed and, and, and maybe it looks like a really big project to implement, but it's one of those things like riding a bike or driving a car for the first time seemed like a lot of steps at first, but you, once you get past that learning curve, then, then it just it becomes a part of daily practice. We've got to get to daily practice or just kind of used to it. We've got to get over the learning curve and start start using or implementing video into our business to make it an everyday habit. And then I know the second thing or the worst thing that was for me is I just couldn't handle or stand myself on video. Um, so I'm with you. I, I know that's probably the biggest fear I have in classes when we're live teaching. It seems that we're, we're kind of shy or we just don't like ourselves on video. And you know, one time Carol kind of brought it up to me, Carol runs Mark Quarter Live, my teaching business, and Carol just brought it up and said, Mark, you don't have to like it. Wow, what an epiphany that was. Uh, you, she's right, you know, I, I I just had to stop watching the video, and if Carol said I needed to redo the video, I redid the video, but you've got to get over that and just stop watching the video or, or get used to it or don't be so concerned with it. It's more important to get the video done than it is to have the perfect video. You'll get used to it. It's taken me years. It'll probably take you years and some of you will adapt to it quickly and it's no big deal. But you just got to do it. You have to do it. It's a part of the future. It's part of today. Now, a couple of software programs that, that you're going to want to look at. You PC users, you Windows users, you have a program available to you called Windows Movie Maker. And that's a free download. Some of you already have it in your programs directory. So if you click Start Programs and, and look around, you probably already have Movie Maker. If not, what you have to do is go to Microsoft.com and at Microsoft.com, just do a quick search for Movie Maker. Right from Microsoft.com in the search field, do a quick search for Movie Maker, download and install Movie Maker, and you'll have a, you'll have a great basic or simple application that you can use to uh, edit video. And I, I really recommend that you start out with a real basic, easy mover movie type maker program rather than one of the full blown. Uh, I don't know, huge programs out there such as uh, uh, Photo, uh, uh, no, it escapes me right now, but like Sony Vegas or one of the Adobe products, uh, CS6 or something. Um, if you use some of those products, I mean, they can be just overwhelming. And I'd rather see you use a simple program and hit the, hit the ceiling of it and request that, that next program up. Start here, start simple, be able to crop a couple of videos, be able to merge a couple of videos together, and, uh, and start out simple with Movie Maker. You uh, Mac users out there, you, you have, you're blessed with a, uh, an application already built into your operating system or already installed called iMovie. Uh, so you don't have to, you just got to go look for that icon and, and open air up and uh, start playing with iMovie as a, as a great first app 
while using video. Um, so right now, I'm going to show you a feature of a, another free program that you can add to your list to you PC users. It's called Photo Story. And this adds a capability that you don't have in Windows Movie Maker, but the folks using iMovie do have in their capability. iMovie has this capability, but uh, uh, Movie Maker does not. So I want you to, PC users, I want you to go get Microsoft Photo Story 3 for Windows. Um, I know it says for Windows XP, but that's okay. It still works on Windows 7, so far Windows 8, and, and many of the other Windows versions. They just um, they haven't updated or changed this program, but it's a very simple, easy-to-use program to create a tour out of regular photos. And we all have regular photos of our listings, but if you want to get up and running with video today, this is how I'm going to help you. You open, Mac users, you open up iMovie, PC users, you go download Photo Story and open up Photo Story and, and, and follow along. Um, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to open up Photo Story and kind of show you how this works. Uh, it's very similar in both programs. But I'm going to begin a new story, hit next here. And I'm going to import pictures by hitting the import button. When I hit import, I can go into my listings and grab this listing photos that happen to be in that directory. I guess that's the last place I was at before. But here's a current listing with all the typical photos that I would take anyway. And I'm going to hit import and it's going to pull those photos in. Now you can you notice there's a cool little feature there called remove black borders. Well my digital camera is pretty open, very much wide angle lens so Sometimes when you pull those pictures into things like MLS or other software programs, because they're so wide, it's going to show a black border on the top and the bottom, kind of like um, an old TV program in your, uh, in your new TV. Uh, instead of 16.9, it's going to be a little bit too wide, so you're going to see that black bar. So I can hit, as I import, I can hit remove black borders, and it's going to pull those out, and I'm going to pull in those pictures by hitting yes to all. So, so far, what we've done is uh, we downloaded and installed a program. If we were a PC user, we opened up Photo Story, we selected some pictures, and we pulled them in. Simple as that. Now, if you really want to go nuts, you can. I'm going to just take this one picture and demonstrate how I can drag it to the beginning. So it's going to pull the photos in in the same order that you probably took them because your your default programs in Windows is by date and time. Um, so there you saw me move the last photo to the first position because it's a good front shot. Uh, I'm going to hit next and progress on and you can see that I have the ability to label each and every photo. Now I don't typically do that, it just takes too long and sometimes it's a little crazy to expect buyers to say, oh, that's the master bathroom and read that and be amused with that. Well, I, I do sometimes label uh, uh, hidden things like a cedar closet or that there's a, an instant hot water heater under that bathroom sink. You know, I might label those types of things on the master master bath uh, photo, but I rarely would label everything across the board. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Nick next and skip that. And then I get to a point where I can actually record a voiceover. So here I'll, I'll, I'll hit record. Welcome to Castle Hills, North Dallas's premier luxury subdivision. Hurry. By uh, Monsen, you could be entertaining poolside. But hurry. At 999000 this one will never sell. So you can instantly do a voiceover right from the computer by talking to the microphone that's built into most notebook computers. Um, it's amazing, hit right next right there. So we've got a voiceover, we can select some music, and here you see select and create. Uh, it's got some music uh, built into the software, but I've actually purchased a piece that I can use legally. Um, Let's see if I can find uh, one. Well, you know what? I'm going to go easy here. I'm going to hit create something from the background. Here we have piano um, sentimental. That's perfect. Um, hit OK. And next. Now, literally, you're done. 
it has created a video by using the photos that you already have. But the beauty of this is just in a few moments with very little technical skill, you can take those pictures you already have of your current listing, merge it, and build a WMV file. You can see that this is building a WMV file, which is, if you're not familiar with WMV, it's a, it's a Windows movie file. Here you see it ends in WMV. Um, the iMovie would just end in MOV, which is a, a QuickTime movie file. Both are compatible fully with YouTube. So we take this, uh, um, this video and we upload it to YouTube, and voila, we've got a new tour. Some of you are saying, hey, that's not really a video. No, it's not. I, I would love to see you go over to there with a digital video camera and, and acquire uh, better footage and real video, but maybe, uh, maybe that's a, a day or two down the road. Tonight, I want you to build a WMV file or an MOV file and upload it to YouTube with the pictures you already have. So you won't even have to leave your office or your house to, to make this happen. Now, okay, it's, Mark, we have, it's a, we have a question here um, that might be a good plan, time to answer. It says, please discuss copyright acknowledgement requirements if you're using copyrighted music in YouTube. Oh, good point. Um, if I bounce on to this next slide here, uh, you can see some of the places that I can purchase audio files. Now, you know, here you see one title of one of the websites is royaltyfreemusic.com. Now, just because it says royaltyfreemusic.com doesn't mean it's free. Um, in fact, a, a file that I use a lot is Allegro. Um, Allegro just being a classical music piece that seems to be upbeat and, 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 and well-liked and uh, very pleasing. So I bought that piece at incomptech.com, and that piece cost me 40 bucks. It was a video, I'm sorry, an audio file that I attached, uh, and you can buy that same file at those other two places. Now, the largest uh, choices you're going to see is iStock Photo, but Royalty Free Music, Income Tech, or other places you can buy those audio sources that are royalty free meaning I don't have to pay every time somebody watches it but if you if you you know you want to buy it maybe in contact my Allegro cost me 40 bucks I stock photo that that same file costs about 80 bucks so I stock photo royalty free music you're going to see wider selection capability but a lot of the techies out there seem to be using in comp tech because of they're a little bit cheaper maybe not the selection but a little cheaper now as far as copyright goes or royalty goes now you can put you know you can dig right over to your iTunes folder on your hard drive and, and pull in one of your fancy uh, latest pop music tunes but you know the only thing is it's going to add a commercial to your video. Uh, there was a time that you couldn't upload it. It would just shut your video down at YouTube, but they don't do that any longer. Now the, they got smart and they just add advertisement to your video when you use pop music. So that way the, the, the royalty companies or the owners of the copyrights can receive a, a little money as, as it's being played. Now, I don't know how well that's going to come over for you in the, in the future. So what I recommend is you get a piece and buy it at one of the places that you see on the screen. And the reason being is you don't want to add a commercial to a commercial. Your promotional video on your listing is a commercial. It's an advertisement. And when you just stack another ad on top of that, I think it just becomes less effective. So consider buying a royalty piece, a royalty free piece that you don't have to pay royalties on, that you just pay for the file. Hope that answers your, your question. Now, oh, let's uh, check the progress here. Here I can, um, photo, at the end of Photo Story, as I compiled that video, um, I'll make an attempt to show it here. I don't know how well it's coming across. It's probably very nasty. Uh, but what I'm seeing on the screen now is it's zooming into the front of the house, and it's about to trans transfer into inside the house from one room to the next. But some of you, uh, if, if you go home and watch HGTV tonight and look at how they're showing houses and, and revealing houses in there, 
you're going to see it's not true video most of the time. Past that footage is a still photo, but there's movement in the software, and they turn it into video with that software program, just like we did here and now. Now, I don't know if you can see it, but it's zooming out, it's transitioning, it's moving around, it gives it lots of movement, so it gives it that interest, but it's, you know, it's done very simply, very easily. Um, and I'm gonna exit out of there and close that. So there's a WMV file now in my videos folder. So I can start uploading that WMV file to YouTube. But before I do, you've got to have a YouTube account. Now, many of you have created a YouTube account, and that's cool. If you have not, then you're going to get to YouTube.com and have to hit this button called Sign In. When you hit the Sign In button, um, if you do not have an account, then you can't sign in. You're going to have to create one. Now, creating an account is e as easy as making a, a Gmail account and that's what you're doing. Um, so if you already have a Gmail email account, maybe before you go through this step, let me back up one screen, before you hit that sign in button here, maybe you head on over to google.com and just log in. Go to google.com and log in if you already have a Gmail account. Just wanna make that super clear. If you already have a Gmail account, start with Google, log in, then click the YouTube button from the Google screen. Let me show you what that looks like. So if, if you're at uh, Google, you can see that I'm logged in by my name in the upper right hand corner. So I want you to get logged in at Google and then you can hit the YouTube button and uh, you're partially logged in there. And then you can create your channel from that point. Um, let's see. So, if you have no account, hit sign in, create your account. You'll have to give it a little bit of info, details, as you can see here. You'll have to affirm that you are who you are by uh, affirming your email uh, message that you receive. And then uh, a little deeper in, as you progress through here, it's going to ask for a channel uh, or a channel name. When you assign a channel name to your YouTube account, that's a, a pretty important step. Um, like my channel, I've got a couple of channels. This channel that I'm, I'm logged into right now is Mark Porter Live. That's my speaking business. But I have another channel called Castle Hills Real Estate. So I have two different channels. One is me as a teacher and one is me as a, as a realtor. Now, I want to make sure that you're proactive about that channel name because it is not editable. Let me say that again. Your channel name is not editable. So I want to make sure that you're real proactive. What do I recommend for a channel name? Well, if you're the broker owner such as I am in Castle Hills, real estate, then I would call it Castle Hills Real Estate. If you're an, uh, a salesperson, an agent, um, and not the broker owner, I would not advertise my broker, I would advertise me. So I would, I would say you'd want a channel name Mark Porter Realtor, or first name, last name, Realtor. That way it becomes very obvious that you are a realtor when they're looking at your videos. Every time somebody watches one a video, you can tell who uploaded it by looking in the lower right hand corner. So you want to be proactive and make it obvious that you're a realtor and you'd like it to be search engine friendly. So by using first name, last name, realtor, that's going to be helpful. So backing up again, go to YouTube, sign into your Gmail account, click on YouTube. Um, sign in here, fill out some details, and be proactive about your channel because it's not editable. And it would be really a bummer if your company name changed and you had a company name as your channel. Um, you know, if you had 100 fans and, and you had to delete the account and create a new account that was conducive to your new company name, that would be a challenge. I'd like to keep your first name, last name, Realtor. All right, now that uh, I've signed in, uh, the buttons of the toolbar looks a little different. I have an upload button across the top. So now I've created a video, so now I can upload one, right? So I'm going to hit that upload button, 
and it shows me this screen in YouTube. And when I'm at this screen, I can hit the arrow and basically browse my hard drive for a video. So if I hit that arrow and point to my hard drive, here you can see the, uh, the Morgan Le Fay WMV we just created. And I can hit open on that movie file. And now it's uploading. And as it's uploading, you can give it a title. If you read up towards the top, it says processing your video. Your video will be live at. So as it's uploading, it's actually showing you the title or the location or address of that video. So you can start um, creating your marketing materials if you needed to. Uh, now, let me talk about a little bit of the nuances here as you upload a video. Uploading a video to YouTube, nobody's going to sit down and watch it for you and label it properly. So you have to label it properly in order for YouTube to figure out how to categorize it properly. And here, here you see my strategies. So I got a listing at Morgan Le Fay, 1101 Morgan Le Fay Lane, Louisville, Texas. 75056 and then it says Castle Hill Subdivision. So that's the title of my my uh, listing or so this YouTube video is the address. And then you'll see, get, see me get a little more generic. So the first hunk or splice of data is the exact address. And really what I'm targeting here in my strategy is the guy that drives by the listing and sees the exact address and goes home and does a Google search for the exact address. I want this to come up in the search engine results for that guy. So I'm catering to him with that first hunk of data, 1101 Morgan Le Fay Lane, Louisville, Texas, 75056. I'm hoping for that guy. Now the next person that comes along maybe just looking saying, hey, thinking about moving to Castle Hill Subdivision, and then you can see my second piece of data in that title is Castle Hill Subdivision targeting that surfer, that guy that goes into Google and types in Castle Hill subdivision listings or something to that effect. And my third piece of data, getting a little more out there generic, a little wider, and that's North Dallas. That's a common way that we talk about our area, North Dallas. And then, of course, I have a different version of Texas. I have Texas spelt out for anybody that might be uh, typing in any other combination without using TX, but they're using Texas. So first, address. Second, subdivision. Third, third is the, the, the wide area, what's out there. And then fourth is the actual state. So whatever areas you work, you would, you would label appropriately. Now, I have the same strategy when I get down to the description. The description of the first paragraph is really house specific. So my first or maybe first and second paragraph is very specific to the home. My third paragraph or you know, the next paragraph is going to be specific to the subdivision. So you can see on the screen, Castle Hills, named 2012 Community of the Year. So I'm really matching my same strategy, but it's an expanded version of that strategy. So here you see lots of detail about Castle Hills, which I kind of took pieces off the Homeowners Association website, the developer's website, and built my, uh, my perfect paragraph with regards to Castle Hills subdivision. And then my, my next paragraph is on a little bit about North Dallas and living up in North Dallas and being convenient to the airport. And then a little bit about Texas. And then, so my description really takes the same approach as the title. I just use more words to describe. Um, and then I restate my title at the end of the description, something somebody taught me along the way that uh, increased my search engine results just a little bit more. Um, I repeated the title at the end of the description. Any uh, questions out there before I move on? No? Okay, then um, the next section there you see is tags. Now, if you're familiar with search engine optimization on a web page, um, these three things are identical. Uh, you, on a web page, you have a title tag, a description tag, and a keywords tag. Uh, we're doing the same thing for our videos to help YouTube categorize our video because YouTube can't watch the video necessarily and then categorize it. it uh, it's a video. 
So we're helping YouTube categorize the video and, and furthermore helping Google categorize our video. And so we're going to use some tags. Now there's going to be some suggested tags built off of what you typed in the title text field and the description field. So maybe take advantage of some of those keywords. But really, a couple of rules of thumb when it comes to keywords, you probably want about 10 phrases. Um, and here you see real estate, Louisville, Texas, Denton County. There's four phrases right there across the top. And then Castle Hill Subdivision, North Dallas, real estate, luxury, real estate, Texas homes, for sale, and pool. So that's about, I don't know, 10 phrases or so. Um, it, most of the time, Google's not going to look past 10 phrases, so there's really no use in putting them there, uh, or putting additional ones in, because you're just going to water down the exact match, and meaning making it less likely to be an exact match to the surfer in Google. So we really want to uh, try to anticipate what somebody would type into Google that would want to see our video. So by making our words match the words that they would type into Google, making our best guess, that's going to increase the effectiveness of the search engine optimization of our videos. Go up a little bit further in the second column, you see privacy settings. You can see that this video is marked private. Um, and I, I typically, I don't know if I mark it private anymore, but I, I certainly mark it unpublished until I get the permission or I get the sign off from the seller. Now, I know the seller, in, when the seller signs the listing contract, they're signing basically language that says it's okay for you to go advertise this in YouTube. But that's a, that, that response might be a pretty poor response to a customer satisfaction issue. Um, so I'm going to recommend that before you make the video public, you, you give them an opportunity to maybe feel the gravity of that. So what you see here on my next screen is a typical email example that I might send out to the sellers. So hey, Greg and Laura, we just completed the initial video production for your house and posted it privately to YouTube for your review. Let me know if you approve of the public release of the marketing video. And then I put that hyperlink that the, the YouTube gave me, uh, basically being the address to that video. So they click that hyperlink, they can see the video, they can give the okay, and then you can change it from, uh, from private to public, or from unpublished to public. You know what, I gave you a bad example here. The, the initial choice is private, there's three choices in that drop-down list that's private, unpublished, and public. I'm going to recommend that you use unpublished when you send that off to the seller. Um, if the seller doesn't have a YouTube account or if they're not opening the email message from the right email address, um, private is just too restrictive. It's, it's not worth the hassle. So I've since moved to unpublished, the second choice is what I have it at when I send this email. So again, unpublished, send the email. When they give you the approval, change it from unpublished to public. Then you go down a little further and it says category. Now this is a great debate amongst uh, real estate agents across the country. There is no category for us. We have found no one specific category in YouTube to pick that makes our videos better for listings. So, I don't know, a lot of us just default to how to and style. And if you, do you find any valid information to the uh, to oppose that, let me know. Um, we, ha we just have not found any significant difference for category. We have contacted the National Association of Realtors and asked them to contact YouTube, but uh, we haven't heard a response on that. Um, we'd love our own category. Uh, but we don't have one yet. And there's the demo email. Okay, now as you drift across the top, now I was looking at the first tab, which is basic info underlined in red. The second tab is monetization. The third tab is advanced settings. So as you're uploading the video, you're adding these details to the video. The second tab, monetization, my recommendation is turn all the monetization off. You don't want to have ads on top of your ad. 
turning monetization on is probably not your best bet at this point. Um, maybe even never when it comes to advertising your listings. If they have to watch a commercial to get to your commercial, you're not increasing the chances of them doing business with you. Uh, so again, turn monetization off on that second tab. Going to the third tab, advanced settings, a couple of points to make here. Um, allow comments. I've heard debates both ways with regards to comments. I think you should allow comments. A video will never go viral if you have to approve each comment. Um, it's just too slow that way. But allowing comments, that doesn't mean you know somebody can't swear or put something nasty there or say they hate the house or whatever. But it does mean you can allow comments that if you catch anything, uh, like you can have YouTube um, shoot you a video, uh, shoot you an email message every time somebody makes a comment, then you can delete a comment if it seems inappropriate. So no sweat. Um, I would allow comments, but that's a personal choice or decision for you. Um, same thing with the rest of it. Either vote on comments, the user can view ratings, and allow video responses. I, I say why not, and then I just police it as the email notifications come in. Uh, and then the second section you see under advanced settings is license rights and ownership. The standard YouTube license is what most of us use. and. Uh, um, I, I don't know if you want to have caption under it, uh, you can mess with that, but I usually just leave it be to the, uh, the default setting. The distribution options allow embedding and notify subscribers. Two very effective pieces there. One, you probably want to allow embedding. Um, and allowing embedding means can somebody take the video and embed it on their website and, and display it on their website? Well, you know what happens if somebody does do that and they take your listing and they, they uh, embed it on their website so other people can see it? Wonderful. You're going to get a hit every time somebody watches that video. The more hits your YouTube channels get, the more you climb up the search engine results. So that's a good thing, meaning you're getting value out of other people using your video. Fantastic. Plus, I want you to embed the video on your website. You know, if I go back here, you know, I never use that hyperlink. If I use that hyperlink in the video, what's going to happen is if somebody clicks it, my competitors are down there on the right-hand side. So I never want to hyperlink people back to my video in YouTube. I'd rather embed the video in my website and have people display that video or I display that video on my website. And then I get two hits. Um, I get a hit over at my YouTube channel and I get a hit over on my website for every person that watches the video. So it really helps your search engine optimization to get those two hits. So always take the people not to YouTube where they're gonna see your competition, but take them to your website using uh, a web page. Now, how do you do that? Well, one, you got to turn that allow embedding on. And then one more point at the top here, and then we're going to move on to uh, a little bit of more practical approaches. So type where it's the I'm video location. That. I'm seeing very few people um, actually typing in a video location. So take advantage of it. Here's how you do it. You type in an address, and then you hit the search button. The Google search comes up, and it tags the, the address. And then when you hit OK, it comes back and shows you this longitude and latitude, and that's good. Th this is going to be a valuable tool for us in the future and as a part of our marketing. So make sure you do that. Mark, I we have a question, we have question here. here. Uh, yeah, yeah, question. Is there a recommended link for a video? Is there a recommended link? Is that what you said? Length. Length of time. Oh, length of time for a video. Yeah, when we're doing videos, um, you know, most people won't tolerate anything longer than two minutes unless it's just super engaging. So if you can, um, you know, break the video up. Um, I, there was a time that I had a, a tour of Castle Hills at the end of each one of my listing videos, but man, that just, it makes the video too long. So I have the Castle Hills tour separate now, and I try to keep short bursts or, or two-minute videos. You might be able to get away with longer, but you're going to need some pretty awesome video to, to keep that, that attention. Try to get the message across in two minutes. 
Um, all right. So embedding, I, I don't know if I can, I'm running out of time here. we got about five minutes. So um, let me give you a quick version of embedding. You can see a button at the bottom of any video called share. And you see that on the screen here. It's next to the thumbs up, thumbs down. When you hit the share button, that's when you see the embed button reveal itself. Hitting that embed button reveals this hypertext markup language that you see on the screen. Now that stuff or that hypertext markup language is what needs to go directly into your website. So if I take that text, bring it over to my website and paste it in the right, right spot, that's going to display a video where I pasted that text. And that video, that YouTube video is going to display inside your website. And I can't wait to show you more detail about that, taking advantage and having some fun with embedding videos. So I want to see you at the upcoming video internet marketing course. So I'm going to copy that text, you paste it in the right spot, uh, the, what we call the source view if you're on uh, Real Pro Systems, that's just a typical template-based website program. And then uh, there you see it, wherever you pasted that text, there's that video with the play button. That's awesome. And then you hear, here you see active rain. You just paste it in the HTML view. Wherever you paste that video text, that's where the video shows up. This is WordPress. You, you paste it in the HTML view. And I really can't wait to show you some of that cool stuff. Uh, and another thing that, that I just think it's knocking it out of the park for me and a few other agents across the country, and that's the use of video within your email message. Don't pay for that service uh, that everybody's selling out there, Those that $30 a month video in your email service. Come on over to the class and, and spend a couple bucks, and in one time I'll show you how to do it for free. We'll embed videos right in your email messages, and you'll, you'll literally be able to knock it out of the park building rapport with people by either you talking in a video or, or even embedding a video in your email message and emailing that off. That is just a really sens sensational approach. So um, I think that about does it for today. So I'm going to stop and, and allow you to, to ask a question or two before I go on or uh, uh, sum up the class here. Um, as you can see on the screen, uh, Monday we've got a class in Grapevine um, from 9 to noon. Uh, it's got CRS credit. It's it has a MC credit, and we're going to go in detail, three hours of detail, of how to do a video. I mean, we're going to create a YouTube account class if you don't have one. We're going to upload a video, even if you've never done it before. I'm going to give you all the tips and tricks to getting your real estate business up and running with video. Any more questions pop up, Roxy? Don't have anything else, and I think it's about time for us to wrap it up. If you got you got any closing comments for the mark? Well, I, it, if you put this off, yeah, my closing comment is if you put this off, I think the reality out there is video, and it's not going to get any easier as other people get better at it. So really, if you can get rolling and get started with video, it doesn't require a lot of expensive equipment. You can get away with a lot with your smartphone and your digital camera. So, hey, come and join us. We're, we're cruising down on the video route, and it is the marketing of tomorrow. <laughs>